as we look at this, um, I want to point out, I won't, I won't deal with it in, in full detail like I will with this question, but we had similar issues between um, these two questions, right? Because essentially, it's understanding the nature of what does this mean, right? What does this mean? And therefore, how many solutions are there? For, for me, partly because I've been dealing with these questions so long, you start to get a bit of a sense of, oh, this should have lots of solutions, or this should have not so many solutions, okay? Now, in this case, one of the reasons why you should know, this should have a buttload of solutions is, think about this, okay? Number one, the powers are high. The powers are high, right? Like, you've got a tan squared in there, and that's not the only thing that's going on. You guys know if, for instance, I gave you something like, oh, uh, I don't know, x squared is what equals zero. You know exactly how many solutions there will be for this, right? If I start to add in terms with successively higher powers, I'm just making this up. Um, no, I'll make it minus. You know, one of the things we looked at in polynomials in extension one is, oh, okay, more powers, more solutions, okay? Um, some of them might not be real, but they're there nonetheless, okay? Now, when you have a look at this, essentially what these things are doing, when you square, you make a function more extreme, right? So, you know, when you go from here to here, you've got lots of steeper parts, okay? So it's also waving up and down more and more times, okay? So therefore, this is going to have lots of solutions just by virtue of that. Secondly, You've got these guys also coming into play, right? The more you have of those, the more complex your solution is, uh, rather the more complex your equation is, uh, rather the more complicated your equation is, the more solutions you're likely to have. So, here's the way I went through it. Step number one, or should I say error number one, is to get everything on one side. Do not divide through. Do not, do not, do not divide through. Here's my first line. Okay. Now we know kind of intuitively, all right, on simpler equations, something like this, for instance, okay, on simpler equations like that, we know not to divide through, right? Dividing through by x causes you some problems because when you do that, what happens? You lose a solution, right? Because what you've done is you've turned a quadratic into a linear function. And of course, you're going to go from two solutions to one. And exactly the same thing will happen here, except the effect is compounded because these are periodic functions. If you divide through by sign theta, in fact, I think you lose three solutions. Okay. So I've moved everything on one side, and now instead of dividing through, I should factorize, right? So I'll take out sign theta. Right, there you go. So there's the first part. And then what gets left behind? 3 times squared minus 1. Good. Okay, now you factorized it. Um, if you wanted, I suppose you could take um, this guy here, and you could actually factorize that another step if, if you wanted to. Um, you don't have to, though. I think far more standard, and I think it's slightly more concise, is to, at this point, branch off. Yeah, to say, okay, well, I've, I've factorized enough for me, right? I'm going to have <coughs> sine theta equals zero. Or I'm going to have tan squared, tan squared, what value could that take? It takes a third. <coughs> but of course, this guy here, we did two, we had two common errors here. Okay. Number one, just like before, we ignored one of the solutions. So we might have said, oh, that's cool. I'll just take the square root, right? Now, this will give you a pair of solutions. But of course, you're missing the plus or minus. Now, the second error was, even for some of us who put the plus or minus there, we just ignored the fact that the minus is there and just said, oh, we just have two solutions, okay? If you're going to have, I mean, in some ways, this is kind of an easier problem to solve than if there was just the one on root three. Because if you've got plus or minus, that means you get a solution in every single quadrant, right? Quadrant one, two, three, four, you're going to get a solution every single time, okay? So therefore, let's come over here. Okay, so our solutions are zero, pi, Two pi. Now, just a quick note, again, a less common error, but an error that some of us made nonetheless, was to forget that there were three solutions to this, not two. I mean, we're so used to there being two solutions to our tree equations from not to two pi. I'm going to keep on reminding you, right, especially at our level as extension one students, um, this is a graph. This is a graph, 
when's it equal to zero? And you guys know exactly what the graph looks like, okay? Now, for students who are kind of struggling and are kind of at that um, level of two where it's like, I just barely wrap my head around how to look at something like this and how to generate solutions, okay? Going towards a graph is a bit much for them and it's just extra stuff to have in your head and be confusing. But not for you guys, right? This should be something that's right at the tip of your, like on the front of your mind as you look at this. As you look at this, you should see one, two, three. And if you're not there seeing that yet, that's okay. Like that's the reason why we do these assessments, to learn that. But you need to start moving towards there. Maybe you just want to spend some time before looking at these questions, just looking at graphs. Just do a lot more graphing so that those sort of soak into your mind and you're like, oh, okay. Like, you get to this point where a picture pops into your mind, okay? Like when I say the word dog, it's hard for you to not picture a dog in your mind, right? And now you're all like, oh, I have a picture of my uh, dog in my head now, okay? He's getting my head. In the same way, I want you to have a picture in your mind when that comes up. Okay, um, question. So in the very first step, step I cancelled the sign data. <laughs> yeah. And then I said... Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm <laughs> Okay, sure, alright, so yeah. if, if, this was zero. if you did this, <laughs> right, so this is dividing through by sine theta, what you really have to say here is, oh, but what that means is sine theta can't be zero, because of course, otherwise, if you were to do this, you'd be dividing by zero, which you cannot do, okay? But of course, doing this is exactly what happens in t-results, like when you introduce t-results, you remove a solution because cos theta appears on the denominator, right? So in other words, you've eliminated by the work you've done. So therefore, down the end, once you start, or you get to this line, right? Then you say, oh no, but wait, right? Back in the beginning, I did this. But there's no reason inherent in the question why that should be so, so I'd better check, okay? But of course, what you've done amounts to this, except without taking away solutions that you weren't supposed to take away in the first place. So there's no reason why you would go about this. I think it's kind of like, a, uh, it's like, it's like having like a painting and then ripping off half of the painting and saying, I don't need to worry about that. And then say, oh no, wait, come back. I didn't mean what I said. And then putting it back and attaching it together. Um, I think it's much, it's a, it's a straight line just to do it this way. Okay. And also just remember exam conditions. If I did this, like most of you guys who made this error, I would just forget about it and I wouldn't come back and test it. I think you were quite, and it's, it's great that you did that, but most people will forget. So that's why I don't recommend that. What's the um, base angle? What's the acute angle? That's the, sol the first solution to this. Pi on 6, right? So if you've got pi on 6, then that's your first solution. Your obtuse one that's um, corresponding to that will be 5 pi on 6. Your first reflex angle will be 7 pi on 6. And 11 pi on 6 is what you get coming back from 2 pi. <laughs>